Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of our Best of Top Traders series where we share segments that we love and that we think you will enjoy and find valuable. My name is Niels Kastorlarsen and today I want to touch on a really important topic. You see, in any systematic trading strategy, choosing the right combination of parameters for your model or approach is critical. So today I wanted to share a valuable takeaway from a conversation with Bill Dreis, a true wave riding legend, where we discuss his thoughts, experience and approach to identifying parameter sets, which I think you'll find to be rather different to most managers. Bill and I discussed this as well as other super interesting aspects of trading from his more than 40 year career and I think these lessons will benefit you immensely. If you want to listen to the full episode just go to toptradersonplug.com forward slash 93. So without further ado here is Bill. Pretty much universal and timeless. Uh, you know, they, they Human go back behavior. in history. Yeah, yeah, they go back in history as far as you want to go, and then we'll go into the future as, as, as far. You know, I agree with all of that, Bill, and, and it's interesting because there, there is obviously still so much resistance. I think it's fair to say by a lot of people, uh, certainly on the investor side, to to embrace this, and and you always have to to justify, you know, why trend following works and, and uh, you know, even if it has a, a year or two of, of, of under average performance, then uh, it's like it's, it's, it's their case for, for why it has stopped working and it's never going to work again. So, um, so certain things don't change. But I want to go back also and another point, which I think differentiates you a lot compared to the managers uh, that we see out there. And maybe you can explain a little bit more of that where I'm going with this is that I know that you, or at least part of your system, uh, is not looking at parameters, meaning you're not trying to optimize a certain uh, parameter set whilst, you know, if you use moving averages or price breakout, whatever it might be, clearly a big part of the research is really identifying the right parameter sets to use. Explain to me a little bit about that and, and, and why you, why have you chosen sort of this way of looking at it? Well, of course, the idea of, of data fitting has, has been the, you know, the nemesis of of anyone who's tried to design systems. And so one of the attractions to the, the fractal approach was that you're dealing, again, with very fundamental patterns, but you're dealing with patterns as opposed to numbers. You're dealing with sort of pictures in, in, instead of numerical approach. So in the first place, if you just the, the algorithm, the way that I've described it, is not a matter of of optimizing on any kind of numerical parameters. It's a matter of, of setting up a certain structure and then, and then in a sense, graphically utilizing that structure to translate that into uh, patterns. Now, there certainly is, a, is data fitting in the sense that you're fitting what patterns that you think are significant, you know, versus those that you don't. You've obviously got, you've got to have some choice there. And for instance, trading weekly charts versus daily charts, that's obviously a parameter that you've selected. But, but these might be numerical parameters, but they've been selected on, on a qualitative uh, criteria. They haven't been selected because I went through and tr you know tried all the different possibilities and picked out the best one. It was a much broader type of, of judgment that was made. So uh, the advantage again is that in in terms of, uh, of designing a system, you're not really focusing. You're you're coming into it with a with an analysis that's based upon, shall we say, qualitative judgments about how the markets work and so on and so forth. And then that's implemented more or less directly without having to go through a, a lot of optimization and testing and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, you, you're you going to back test your, your methodology. And, and if it doesn't look like it works, you're not going to use it. So right there, you're data fitting. <laughs> Nobody uses a system that doesn't test out. You, you certainly can't avoid that kind of parameterization completely, but you, you can certainly keep it to a minimum and also, and also avoid being diluted by it. I think the worst thing that comes from parameterization is, is you tend to think you've got something that's a lot more, you know, say, magical than is actually the case. 
usually come to to these um, conclusions based on on research and and so on and so forth. How do you just sort of broadly uh, frame that in terms of just the parameter side of things, not you know exactly the risk management? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Well, yeah, but risk management is pretty much common sense, and everybody's risk management is the same. Anybody, who's, you know, and the risk management is driven by the by the uh, the realities of the business, and and to some extent, of course, it's a matter of choice. In other words, if you, in other words, I've select, uh, I've decided to operate in a certain, so we say, uh, level of leverage. And you find that the level I operate in is probably towards the high end among CTAs. Uh, if you get much higher than that, then you're out of business. But most CTAs, as they get as they get big, they tend to they tend to cut their leverage. And so the typical CTA is probably about half of what I of what I use. But again, those are that to me is pretty standard. In other words, I can I can just glance at somebody's performance record or, or whatever, just basic stats. And, and I know I know what uh, region of risk or, or of exposure that they're operating in. And if you look at those people, you know, they've got the people who are established and have been around for a while, they're all in the same ballpark. You look at me versus Dunn or, you know, various other people with similar uh, risk, per, you know, with similar, so, shall we say, standard deviations, uh, monthly standard deviations or similar drawdowns or whatever, you know, we're all doing the same thing. We all got about about the same uh, margin to equity. And so I I think that to some extent, I don't, uh, money management's uh, another issue. In other words, once you, your system generates a, you know, a series of trades, which may or may not be correlated, uh, typically you're going to have, you know, about 40% winners and 60% losers and, you know, on and on. And that's why I say that pe- different people have different systems. And certainly from a marketing point of view, it's nice to say, talk about how special your system is. But you're really pretty much driven by what the markets are doing and what they offer you in terms of possibilities. And, you know, someone who's, you know, a well designed system is going to do a reasonably go- good job of capturing what the mar- market offers. But it's, you know, it's more of a either you, you know, either you've got one or you don't. It's not a matter of that. The, the, there's a lot of a lot of distinction in terms of what the what the outcome is. And once again, the outcome is is pretty much driven by the level of the, the amount of leverage that you, that you take. And if if you normalize to that leverage, then you know anybody who's been around for a time for a long time is going to have a pretty much the same performance. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this short insightful clip from a past episode of the show, then you will love the new free book that I'm giving away right now. It's called The Many Flavors of Trend Following and includes some of my best insights on this perhaps the most dependable and consistent yet often overlooked investment strategy. You can get a free copy at toptradersonplug.com forward slash book right now to start your own investment journey today. Just go to toptradersonplug.com forward slash book and make sure to come back to the podcast or my YouTube channel next week for more exciting and engaging conversations.